Hi, everybody. How's it going? You guys are not having fun at all. This is terrible. What is in those waters they gave you? Oh my God. Um, hi, my name is Jarrett Weisselman. I'm the editorial director for ET Online, and I'm super excited to be here tonight because even if they weren't here, I would tell you that this is my favorite comedy on television right now. The second season of Mindy Project, there are no words to describe how incredible and smart and funny it's been, so I will leave it to the actual people who have the words to do so. So, Chris Messina is dancing his way here as we speak. He's in traffic. He'll be here soon. Uh, but in the meanwhile, please give a warm welcome to the rest of the cast. Zoe Jarman, Beth Grant, Adam Pally, Zosha Rockmore, Ike Barinholtz, Ed Weeks, and creator and star of The Mindy Project, Mindy Kaling. Go crazy, Ike, wherever you want to go. they enjoy the show. <laughs> so, um, amazing episode. I, I have to ask, you know, is the, one of the joys of being in a second season with these people that you get to learn quirks about them as people that you can use? For example, Chris clearly knows how to dance. I mean, you can now start to infuse that into your show. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we discovered that in episode four um, in the club from first season that he liked to dance and women found it very appealing. <laughs> and, um, but he's kind of like a shy guy, so we'd have to, we had to like write it into the script in order to... He's on his way. He just texted me, horrible traffic, so bad. I'm taking <laughs> 405. And I, is he off Wilshire? <laughs> <laughs> he's coming. True or false, Chris Messina impressions are everyone's favorite pastime on the Mindy Project set. False. <laughs> it's totally false. Totally false. Not, not true at all. <laughs> I can't do one. Can you do one? Can Pally, can you do can one? Can I do one? <laughs> <laughs> it, all it is, it's really, it's almost just Elma Fudd with a uh, New York accent a little bit. <laughs> Wait, can you do, can you please do Pally talking to Chris? Oh Having any God, new people in the cast? this is not an accurate impression. No, it's such a good this impression. This is not an accurate impression. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what time's call time tomorrow? I'm not sure. I didn't get a call sheet. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. What's the, what's the second AD's name? I think it's Kendall. You should text her. <laughs> you, made me, you made me sound like Carol Channing and I sucked a helium balloon. <laughs> it's Carol Channing. <laughs> the worst impression you do is of me. It's, I think it's terrible. I hate it. I hate it. It's horrible. Guys, it is so funny. Yeah. Literally, it's so funny. I can do a good one. I can do, I can do a good one of you. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. Be careful. Okay. Uh, this is... Home. This is, this is after Pally did like an improv scene. Yeah, let's say I, improv oh, no. I, let's say I improvise something. So I'll be, I'll be Pally, I'll be Pally in the scene. Uh, yeah, what is this, Braveheart? Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny, but it doesn't fit. <laughs> 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 it's so funny, yeah, that's, she got this so funny. <laughs> oh man, I said terrible. <laughs> well, let me ask, because one of the biggest questions we continue to get from the audience is the percentage of improv versus scripted in the show. I mean, what, Mindy, is, like, how do you sort of break it up? How, would you, how much would you say there is actually in the show? Um, well, we try to follow, I only worked on The Office beforehand, so we were following that, like, regimen or whatever, which is, like, we always get it scripted, and I believe we have the best writing staff of any comedy Yeah, and they're show. here, so, man. A lot of them are here. Matt Warburton, Bronson Lang, Schleicher, Tracy Whitfield. And, uh, so, improv is like for fun, and some people are super great at it. And so we um, we have you know scenes when we let like this one go off, and he's so good at it and stuff. So, um, but in general, we usually try to get it pretty tight and scripted. I would say it's like fifteen to twenty percent. Would you say? Yeah, around there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the scripts depending come in, on the script, yeah. They're so tight. They're so packed with jokes. But after you get it a certain amount of times, there's just there's always just on the fly too. We have alts that kind of fly in. You know, we might think of like, oh my God, Beth, say this, or Zoe, say this, and 
So a lot of it is just, yeah, you know, a certain percentage of it is, is uh, kind of on the fly. It is episode about MMA where his character had to hold me hostage with a Nerf gun. And that's <laughs> probably one of the funniest, one of the great things about this cast in particular is going to be like, Kelly, like, go on a rant of, like, a, you know, in our mind, we were, like, a guy disillusioned by Vietnam. He, like, came back in his country and advantage. Yeah, it, it was a weird area. Yeah. 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 It but was, he, like, not a real clear character. Yeah, he yeah. got into, like, <laughs> Obama's <laughs> America. Yeah, it didn't add up, but it's, like, in, but, you know, we could play in that area because, you know, Jeremy Brunson had written this really funny conceit, which is that I was interrupting this very intense Nerf game. So, um that answers your question. But I mean, a lot of the actors also are writers. I mean, you guys have all done improv and other films and you know television shows. What do you guys think the advantage to having a cast of actors slash writers is? Ed? Um, we all, uh, I don't know, I guess we all can, you know, just contribute and... Uh... Good answer, you're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of the writers. <laughs> you are a writer. I am a writer. You What's the, the show to Showtime. But it's very s slow, uh, uninteresting, <laughs> ill-communicated thoughts. Very staccato. I, what's it, what's it like scrutiny. being a writer? The what? unfair scrutiny that Pally just was a like, good job, man. Oh, my God. You were right on him. Pa yeah, right pounce? on him. Well, I mean, wh wh what's it like being a writer? Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there's good communication? Yeah. <laughs> I'm being Pinteresque. This pauses. <laughs> I think, I think, I think uh, to answer Ed's question in a more succinct and eloquent <laughs> manner, um, I would say that being writers and having written, like he's written, he's written, they've all uh, done stuff like that before, it, you understand the story, you see where the story is going. So you, when you do make a contribution, it's on story, it's on character, as opposed to just random nothingness, I think. Was that, Mindy, in any way your intention when casting the show to look for those double threats, or was it just a happy accident? Um, I like writerly actors, and um, our room of our writers' room is full of people who are like the stars of their high school plays. So I and I like writers who are very like actorly and theatrical in their own ways, and that's just a really fun atmosphere. And coming from the office with Paul Lieberstein and Steve and BJ all writing a lot, I just liked that to be around that. Um, but then there's just really accomplished actors on our cast who are you know aren't necessarily you wouldn't think of them as writers first who are came just from casting like. You know, Beth and Chris um, are just such accomplished and funny actors. So it's good to have a mix. Thank you for assuming I was the star of my high school play. I played Uncle Henry in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. Well, well, working off that, Beth, I don't think there's a single film that I love that you're not in. I don't feel like there's a single television show that I've ever watched that you have not guest starred on at some point. Um, with a room full of actors, I mean, what for you was the draw here with the Mindy Project? Mindy Kaling. Uh, I fell in love with Mindy Kaling, and that's the truth. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell that embarrassing story again. Uh, I guest starred on the show, and I had never met anyone like her. I still have never met anyone like her who could, you know, write, produce, and improvise and be loving and kind to people on the set and be generous of spirit. And I just said, where did you, I know she's so embarrassed. I'm sorry to even tell this. I'm glad I can't really see her face. <laughs> I don't mean to sound corny, but no. she's so sweet. It's, it's so sweet. Beth, I'm enjoying your story. It's really a true story. I, uh, so after I finished guest starring, I went home and my friend Octavia Spencer had, did this dream board thing. Okay, name dropping an Oscar now. <laughs> really, cool, uh, really cool. Oscar winner. I knew her long before she had an Oscar there. We were in time to kill together. So. Um, but, and she had so been. you know Matthew she, McConaughey too. Okay, wow. <laughs> we get it. Unbelievable. Personal we get friend, it. Personal friend, Matthew McConaughey. I'll tell you a very nice story that I think I'm part of. I'll shut up. <laughs> Well, and Sandra Bullock had put us in a short... Oh, my God! <laughs> no. What? <laughs> and Paul Newman was there, too. But she had, done, she had done this vision board of everything she wanted in her life. And she got every single thing on that board. I mean, meeting Obama and Meryl Streep and the little gold statue and all those things. And she kept saying, you need to do a vision board. And I didn't want to do it. I thought it was like witchcraft or something. But, <laughs> <laughs> but after meeting Mindy, I came home. And the Emmy magazine had arrived with her picture on the cover. 
and I ripped it off and I told my husband, give me a piece of cardboard. <laughs> and he did and I glued it on there and I put it behind my china cabinet and so help me, I forgot completely that I'd done it but I thought, I want, I'm a feminist, I'm from the 60s when we banned the broad, took off our girdles and we prayed for people like Mindy. We hoped that our children would be self-sufficient and creative and empowered and the boss. And to see this happen, right? The boss, baby. And to have that happen, I just wanted to support that voice. And then a couple of months later, I was supposed to come back and do another guest star, and I get a call from my agent that says, they'd like you to be a regular. <laughs> and I'm going, uh-oh. <laughs> Pally's vision board is just a Jerry's Deli menu. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just going to say one more thing, that, you know, because I'm an actor and this is a room full of actors and, you know, I have been very, very, very lucky to be an ensemble player with many great movies. And I remember the first one that was like starting to make the round. I mean, I used to couldn't even get invited to the premieres of my movies. Like I would have an accountant that said, why weren't you at your premiere? I was there. And I mean, <laughs> Lowly accountants. I mean, we know how that is, actors, right? We all know. And finally, No Country for Old Men came along, and for some reason I got invited to all those parties. I kept thinking any second I was going to get thrown out. But I started to understand what it is to be an ensemble player mm -hmm. and to value the contributions that we make as character actors and that we you know, are part of the team, even if I, Beverly may have one line per episode or whatever, it's always a great line, and, but I am part of this family, and we do support each other and love each other and cry to each other when something sad happens, and um, it, it, these, and I got the SAG Ensemble Award for No Country, and we were nominated, and we won for Little Miss Sunshine, nominated for the artist, and Look how small my part was in the artist. It's just not about that. This is a true ensemble in the sense of being family. And we love each other. We run around saying, I love you, I love you. I mean, it's kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> but we really do. And it starts at the top. That's the truth. OK. I won't say anything else. That's very sweet. Now, Zosha, you had a similar experience where you came on as a guest star and then were up to recurring. In situations like that, do you come in and say to yourself, well, I'm just going to, like, knock this out of the park so they have to make me a series regular? Um, <laughs> um, going from, like, a guest star to a series regular is, like, actor folklore. Like, you hear about <laughs> in class, they'd be like, that's the dream. Like, you better do a good job. So they'll ask me that. <laughs> You know, you hear that, but I guess I always try to kill it, whatever I do, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. whenever I get an opportunity, I'm always trying to kill it, but I would never be uh, presumptuous, is it, I don't know if I use that right, but presumptuous enough to <laughs> think that anyone would, like, ask me back, like, to be there forever. So, it was really surprising and cool and exciting and life-changing. <laughs> it was the lifestyle change I'd been wishing for, so hallelujah. <laughs> Mindy, what, what was it about Beth and Zosha? And because the show was sort of had, you know, uh, an ever changing cast over the first season. When they came in, what did you feel like they brought to the show? And same with Pally, that was sort of not there in the beginning. Um, well, and this is no dig to anyone that has been on our show because we've had so many great guest stars and people on our show, but they're just really funny. Yeah. And, and they're so different from each other. And, um, you know, I was in the office, I was number 14 on the call sheet, and I know what it's like to be, you know, when you're number five through 14, you serve a purpose, which is like, you come in, you advance story in a funny way, you make people fall in love with you, you steal scenes, and then you're like, how can I help? How can I help you, Rain Wilson? How can I help you, Steve Carell? And it's really fun, um, but it's a really specific job, and I did it for eight years, and so finding those people that you're like, oh, thank God, like, they're there, and like, I think the first thing Zosha did in our show was she, she was like, hey, uh, Betsy, let's, let's go. We're going to go make a music video with the skeleton. And she has a skeleton that she wheels into the room and like make, does the arm wave and then like they leave. And she just, it's just, she's so funny. So when you have people who are just stealing scenes over and over again, you're like, we better, 
we're now showing the world how good they are. We better put like a, a leash on them so they don't get anywhere. So Res is just really selfish and great to kind of put them on retainer and get to see them every day. I love that. Zoe, in this conversation about sort of the family camaraderie that's on set and making the most of it, what have you enjoyed about, you know, what you've gotten to do through this show? Um, well, I've gotten a, to do a lot of really fun stuff. And um, I guess it's a, it, it's a combination of getting to do really fun stuff and then also getting to, like Minnie was talking about, um, support other jokes, mm -hmm. having my own jokes and then getting to sort of react and support other jokes. And then also getting to watch such incredible writers and performers do their thing um, has been this enormous gift because every single person that's in our cast and all the people who come in to guest star are so talented that I, I just feel like I'm, I'm learning in every second. Also a big thing with acting, I think, is adaptability. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have someone who's like, if you say to them real quickly, hey, can you, uh, in this scene, at the end of it, uh, come in for a button? And you don't want them to like, overthink it and be like, um, okay, would my character do that? And I think, I think that's one thing about um, you know, Zoe and me and Beth and Zoe, kind of the auxiliary of the, of the crew, is that we're kind of down for whatever, you know what I mean? And all, I think all four of us, are willing to look really stupid. <laughs> and that's another big thing in comedy. It's like, no pride, we, we have no problem um, looking like uh, complete idiots. So I think that's... Uh, yeah, I would say that that's definitely true. Like, uh, <laughs> we enjoy it. We, I enjoy looking stupid and... Yeah. and um, stupid is funny. Yeah, it's a cultivating openness and flexibility, which is good in acting, good in life. We are a very flexible cast. I mean, not just the way we act, but the way we can bend our bodies and stretch. Question in the back. <laughs> Adam, let me ask you this, because you came from another one of my favorite comedies of all time, Happy Endings. Yeah. It was one of the funniest, most amazing shows. And having been on that set with you guys and having been here, it strikes me that it's a similar atmosphere in terms of the way you all treated one another. I mean, is it rare in this industry to find this kind of on-set environment? Uh, I think yes and no. Um, I think uh, it's, it's rare because uh, there's a small population of like-minded people who enjoy to do comedy a specific way. And, um, but uh, once you find them, it's, it's easy to kind of keep going from thing mm -hmm. to thing where those people are. And in my case, I was lucky enough that that Mindy, who um, you know is is uh, genius, uh, and had been on the office uh, for so long, and, and and learned under those people, and she she you know thought that I could help, mm -hmm. and so it was it it it's easy to kind of identify who those people are and and, and how you would get along with them. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's both. Ike, you come from Second City. Yes. Correct. Um, you, yeah, absolutely. Also, uh, you did a lot of sketch comedy with Mad TV, which yes. probably helped hone those. You yeah. not yeah. only, I think you're the only person in the world who has both Lynette Scavo and Javier Bardem look alike on their resume. Those are deep cuts, my friend. <laughs> that is really, that's, that's fantastic. Yes. I mean, it's true. But let me ask you this. I mean, when you bring that sort of comedy family, you know, seconds, that's one of the things people who go through Second City and like troops talk about is the family environment that you get. Do you see that represented, you know, well in this town? At, um, in this town? Yeah. I mean, I think like Adam said, you gotta, you gotta know where to look. Um, you know, the kind of the, uh, Chris Messina! Oh! Hey! Sorry he's late. He just finished his last newspaper delivery. <laughs> and <laughs> he's so sorry. So what'd you do? They saw Christmas. They saw, they saw they your saw dance. They saw Christmas. They saw you dance. <laughs> Chris, what did you do? Did you call a cab and then when they got there demand to switch places? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> I think you look nice and I'm very happy to see you, Chris. Godfather 2. Hey, everybody. It's Godfather 2. <laughs> I love you. Love you. Um, 
these are nice chairs. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll make it quick, but like uh, one thing that you look for is in a, in the basis of improv, as some of you may know, is um, not just to say yes, but to say yes and. That's a huge, that's the backbone of improv. You never want to be like, no. Um, and by saying yes and, you kind of have this mentality that you can build together. And I feel like, you know, Mindy really, really understands that mentality. And even when you're like cutting someone down in a scene or you're being mean to someone in a scene, as long as you're building a scene together by saying yes and, uh, the scene is going to work. It will go somewhere. And I think she did a great job at finding, was there eight of us? Nine, of us? Nine people who kind of understand that motto. And I think it kind of bleeds into the performance. And, uh, and I, hopefully it, 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 you can see it on screen. Absolutely. Um, hi, Chris. How are you? Good, how are you? Um, as everyone, you know, cooed when you walked in, we did see you dance. And it was something we had talked about before was what has been asked of you as a result of being on this show, whether it's nude gallery art modeling or, you know, the, well, I have to say, quite amazing dancing you did in that episode. Thank you. I mean, coming into this, did you ever anticipate that this show would be asking, like, so much of you as an actor? Uh, no, no, I didn't think uh, it would, but I'm glad, you know, I, I grew up dancing, so it's nice to uh, put it to some use. You know. <laughs> Mindy, what was it when you came up with the character of Danny Castellano that you thought Christmasina fit? Well, we had a different character. I mean, I just knew I wanted to work with him. So he came over to my house, um, like, two years ago, and at that point, um, B.J. Novak, who was one of the executive producers on the pilot, we met with him and we talked about him. And, and he's just so great that the original character was not like him at all. And we sort of rewrote it for something that we thought Chris would score in. And then getting to know him, and it's such a treat, actually, because getting to know things like that he dances and that he's from the tri-state area and so is the character. And they're very different. I mean, like, the characters are... are, are the Danny's very, very neurotic in a way that Chris is not. But... Um, we like to take some of like, you know, Chris is like kind of an old fashioned guy. I mean, one of the first things he said to us is like, I'm a, an actor from the 70s, because I mean, those are your idols that's like living now. And that's, even though the character isn't an actor, like I think some of that, and it's so charming, mm -hmm. that's such a charming quality of Chris that he has that. So we kind of, we kind of steal those parts to him and exaggerate them. Absolutely. And your character was another one that really evolved from the pilot. I mean, it's almost, totally different. He's no longer sort of this bang buddy potential for Mindy's character. Yeah. I mean, did that end up working to your advantage, though? Because it seems like the people Mindy actually dates don't stick around the show. Yeah, they long. leave the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, I mean, I told too many people in England to go screw themselves when I left, so I can't. Um, no, actually, I think, uh, I think it, it gave him much more um, potential to be sort of likable. I think the idea of a regular in the cast who's sleeping with your heroine uh, and sort of being a bit kind of, you know, being a sort of a fuck buddy to her, frankly, and, and maybe not being the most kind of l lovely guy to her, I think, you know, was going to test the audience's sympathy with him. So, uh, but then, of course, this season, he's become fat, which has been a whole new <laughs> layer uh, comedically to play, which has been really fun. Well, it's also, I think Ed Weeks in, like, real life is one of the funniest guys I've ever met, and the funniest thing about him is when you annoy him, he gets very flustered, and, let's you know, not, no, let's not go into Well, that. I mean, I will, <laughs> what I'll do is like, I'll say to him, like, hey, just so you know, at some point today, I'm going to knock you out in the middle of the scene. I'm going to punch you in the face. And, it's and, like a family. It's like a family. Yeah, yeah. Like a really and, and dysfunctional now, family. And now we're at the point, like, right when we show up at call at 6 a.m., I just, like, walk over to him, and he's just, like, right away, he's just like, hey, man, I can't do it today. I can't. Like, I, have, I can't do this whole thing. And, like, that is so funny to me. And I think towards the end of last season, we started kind of, you know, realizing that's who Ed is. He's like a fly, very you're handsome. The, you're a bully. Like a you're a terrible bully. No, I'm he's, not. He's <laughs> charming. You're just bringing out, you're just bringing out my. Part of our show. You're just bringing out my funniness. That's all you're that's doing. That's all I'm doing. You should yeah. thank me more. No, often. I did. I should. It's, it's um, so no, sorry. he's become. He's become like a. 
sort of a flustered Aunt Mildred, I think. Yes, kind of, yeah. That's exactly kind of, sort of chubby and kind of impotent and constantly and kind he's, of. He's pulled neurotic. Out. He's neurotic and he's very, like, all the characters are neurotic, but his, he has to be the one in charge. And we're so wildly unprofessional that I think reining us in is, is a very funny color in him. Like, he does this thing when you run your fingers aggravatedly through your thick mane of hair, it's like my favorite thing you do. Oh. And you do, it, you do it every episode a couple of times. Uh, yes. Stop talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. You want us to recap <laughs> what happened? <laughs> the lights went down. The lights went down. Uh, the sound the came, came on. on both of them. There's a screen behind here which might shock the fuck out of <laughs> The audio from the show played over the speakers. <laughs> and uh, they clapped a lot. It was great. <laughs> and laughed a lot. Thank you, ma'am. The red glasses look good. Do you, do you, we'll tell you uh, what it has. Yeah. The, the red glasses, assist. I feel like, are like our ninth cast member now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the best. Like they, uh, they're, they're very fun for us to play with. <laughs> Chris, let me ask, because um, uh, the majority of your tea work had clearly been lighthearted comedies like Damages when you were a POW <laughs> and Six Feet Under and things like that. Um, Coming into this half-hour comedy world, I mean, what have you learned about yourself as an actor through this role? Well, these, these guys are gonna make fun of me, but uh, oh, no. <laughs> I, <laughs> I grew up watching soap operas. You know, my mom liked The Guiding Light. And I, I, so I, I, my, I tend to go, I like to talk slowly <laughs> and uh, get melodramatic, you know. So, so that's not what this show is at all. <laughs> uh, so I learned a lot from all these guys. I, I, you know, they're going to tease me, so I'm setting it up for that. But, you know, they're all so fucking funny. They're all so funny, and they've taught me a lot about comedy. Comedy's really hard. I mean, it's really, really difficult. Um, you know, you, I've taken a million acting classes, and what these guys all do every day, the way they come up with bits or uh, different lines or improvs or just their timing... It's very, very difficult to teach that. And, uh, you know, so I, I learned, and still to this day, you learn about that from these guys. So, you know. Well, you know, it's funny because... No, 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 no this, is, this, is, this is a very nice thing I'm going to say for you. Um, like, uh, he's like a real actor, you know what I mean? Like, like, a real actor. Like, this guy knows what the hell he's doing. So, for, like, a comedy writer like me or Mindy, I feel like he's almost like, a, like, a, like the greatest toy in the world. Because you could take... <laughs> the dumbest line. You can give him the stupidest line or the most ridiculous line and he will deliver it with a very real gravitas where it really, it, it's true for his character and it's so amazing to watch him take a stupid line about like, you know, uh, the Pope and make it like, oh wow, that's a real person saying it. So it's really good. And also you like, he, you elevate, it's like this is your life, you elevate scenes. <laughs> I feel like to act with him because he's so kind of natural and small. No, and doing like romance scenes with him where there's this one scene we just saw in Christmas, Chris, where you and I are looking at each other and it's like you put a fire hydrant across some Christmasina and lit that way. And he looks yeah. at you and you're like, they have, are they going to, will they or won't they? You know, like <laughs> it's just like it's so, it's hard to, you're just yeah. so intense and it's all about commitment and your training and stuff. He'll ask me like what we're ordering for lunch and I'm like, are, are we about to kiss? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, holy, holy shit. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Thai food. Uh. <laughs> I mean, on that note, how many of you feel you have what would be considered like traditional acting training? Like, in, I know Zosha, you were to Tish, right? I mean, what do you feel like was, Beth too, what, I mean, what do you guys feel were some of like the best lessons you learned in school about comedy that you can apply here or on any of your other projects? Hmm. Well, I think the world of the play, understanding the scene, understanding the world that it's, you know, what's actually happening in the scene and what the evaluation is and that, you know, it's usually not about me and to see how I can be of service to it uh, without being distracting, which is hard for actors because we're all show-offs, you know, and so it's, I think, um, and, and my inner life. I mean, I love Beverly and I know all about her inside. And so I think that it, if even if they cut to me, I'm having a reaction that comes from in my work. I mean, I take this work as seriously as any 
feature film I've ever done. We make a movie every week. I mean, that's really what we're doing. Absolutely. And I don't take this work seriously. <laughs> You're a fraud. And I am a fraud. And uh, let me tell you that there's just as much room for frauds in this business as there is <laughs> for people with real education. <laughs> I could... I can tell you this though, I, I, coming from the same world as Pally, the kind of long form improv world, whether it's UCB or Improv Olympic or Second City, um, a lot of it came from a guy named Del Close, who you might have heard of, who was a, there you go, yeah. I got to work with Del for a couple years before he died, and he was really crazy at this point, and his mind was kind of ravaged by alcohol and drugs. But every once in a while, he'd give you a note that was so cogent, it would like hit you to the core. And I remember one time in an improv show, I played this very dumb, silly, like, like sorority girl. And I was like, uh, let me in the house. Like that type of like big, dumb, broad thing. And I got a huge laugh from the audience. And after the show, I was you know, really happy because I did well. And Del came over and was like, were you proud of that character? Was it, did, were you proud of it? Were you, you, know, you got a big laugh. Were you happy with the way it went? I was like, yeah. He goes, well, I thought it was so dishonest. And I was like, oh, Jesus. And it really kind of in a way stuck with me a little bit. It's like you should have some integrity, whether you're playing, you know, uh, a plumber who, uh, you know, likes to, you know, live in a toilet or you're playing, you know, the president of the United States. Your character should really play to the top of its intelligence and it should have integrity to what it means to him. And that's something I took away. And even in my dumb scenes with like Pally or Chris or whatever, I, I, I try to maintain that. Why do scenes with me have to be dumb? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I, I learned, I feel, I took, I took acting classes when I was in college, kind of as like you needed to take it if you wanted to be a playwriting major, you had to take one that was like a performance, and it was very daunting, I'm very intimidated by actors, like, like Chris, who study it and love talking about it, that world like intimidates me. But when I began The Office and watching like Steve Carell and Rain Wilson for eight years, like 16 hours a day, is what I feel like was like going to college twice, basically. Yeah. And that was... Like you steal, you know, oh, yeah. like you steal because no one if I'm doing the same thing Corell is doing No one will pin it on me. It's like, you know, you're yeah. the greatest right, right. thief in the business because no one will make that connection And when you watch him and this is a guy I mean Michael's got as a character who every episode if you thought about it He was like crying in every episode. So yeah. He was <laughs> capable of great Comedy things and physical stuff because Steve is so talented and rain I mean he went to he went to NYU grad school for acting too and like they're so good that you just study them to quote uh, Eugene Levy's character in Waiting for Coven, <laughs> we study them until you kind of become them. Because that was like, that was a really a great tool to 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 bring in this. And like, and I gotta say, like, one thing about spending so much time with Chris, which I which I do, is that you I learned so much from him as an acting partner, as in a scene partner, because the character, and what I'm really most proud of the show, is when my character has to learn something or face a harsh truth. Mm -hmm. And I think that watching Chris do that and, and cuts and doing that, I'm sort of doing that same process that I did with Corell or Rain, um, but with him. And I get to do it even, because now I'm editing, because I so, have so much more to do with the show than I did at the office. So I'm learning so much from this ensemble, which is such a nice gift. Absolutely. W Minnie, let me ask, because coming into this, you knew you were going to, you know, you're going to be a writer, you're going to be the star, you're going to be involved in so much behind the scenes stuff. Is it more arduous than you thought it would be? I mean, because, I mean, I follow you on Instagram, like, you're always working. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like three in the morning and there's like a photo from you like in an editing suite. Yeah, well, I have the, like I said, I mean, this is brazen, but it's true. I mean, when I was at the office, I felt that was the best staff. I have the best writing staff and I have the best team assembled. Um, we, you know, Howard Klein, who created Parks and Rec in the office, is also here all the time, Michael Spiller, who we, literally stole from Modern Family is here. He directed that he directed beautiful Christmas. episode that you just saw and all of our most cinematic episodes. Matt Warburton, I mean, like we basically just plucked and stole and I scorched earth with all my friends from all the best shows. <laughs> and they're all on my staff from, from everyone from 30 Rock to Jimmy Fallon. So uh, that has been extremely helpful. And they're not just writers, they're like A students. So that they have like, they're very perfectionist and they want to do, you know, they're in the editing bay, they're on set. So I, I have many jobs, but I, it's offset by the fact that I have this in, in insanely talented team that really uh, is behind the scenes and don't get a ton of credit for it. Absolutely. And no one tell anyone that I told you. <laughs> <laughs> 
you've ruined the illusion, Mindy. It's over. Um, I, I'm curious because we're sort of talking about things we're learning from other actors or from school. Um, Ed, I mean, what do you feel is an amazing piece of advice you've gleamed from either a teacher or a coworker or just watching someone else? What is like the most Mind amazing? the gap. <laughs> One of the most amazing pieces <laughs> of advice uh, that I saw, actually, it was, um, it was Anthony Hopkins uh, on, on the Actors Studio, and he was, uh, he was being asked for advice, and he said the thing that lots of actors do is they try to show everything, but actually what people do is they hide things. Um, and so, a bit, I mean, he's such a specific case because he has those amazing twinkly eyes and that incredible face. Uh, but he said, you know, if, 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 you just, if you're trying to hide your anger or your, whatever the character is feeling, you're trying to not to be weak in front of people because the camera is so close, it will, it will sort of see it mm -hmm. without you having to sort of act it. You just kind of think it. And that, to me, was an amazing sort of thing to have in my head. I'm not sure if I fulfill it at all, but uh, it was very interesting. Yeah. Uh, Zoe, jo Josha, what about you guys? Yeah, I'll, I'll say, um, I had an, an acting teacher who talked a lot about um, being in the space where uh, of the unknown, which I think for creativity is, and just for life is important to get comfortable with because it's ultimately never going to be com comfortable. So if you're a little uncomfortable and you're, in, you're really present and cultivating that, that sort of being able to be really present, which is incredibly hard to. Um, I think that that has really helped me, and I think that, and I don't, I'm, don't always succeed, but I feel like the moments w where I realized I was very present, and I didn't know what, what I was doing or what was happening or was, what was gonna happen next, something comes out of me that ends up feeling very right, um, whether or not it, it's used on the show or, or, or contributes in any major way, for me that feels like a success. Mm -hmm. And I can feel the difference, you know? And um, it's something that I continue to work towards. It's hard. Um, <clears throat> this is more, I guess, about like acting business, I guess, than what um, Anthony Mackey told me. This is gross, sorry. Did you have to like come into this business with your dick in your hand? Whoa. Like, Love no, it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's true though, you have to be so fearless, like on so many levels, like in the room. And as you uh, like work more and more and get higher and higher, it gets more scary because you start to work with like famous people and stuff and people you've been watching and things. And like that's when the fearlessness uh, really comes in handy you have to just be willing to put it on the line and maybe get shut down or like not get a laugh and it might hurt your feelings and like whatever but you just have to just keep going and just stay in the moment and be totally fearless you can't just you just can't be intimidated by anything you just have to know that you're like dope and that's just what it is <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and i you know i think that's great advice you know in terms of auditioning also and having done a bunch of these and interviewed actors I have never met a single actor who actually enjoys the audition process. Um, I just don't think it exists. Does anyone Do you like it? Do you hate it? I, I hate auditioning, yeah. I've, I've always been really bad at it. I, I, I think the best auditioners always usually are the... Sometimes they end up... <clears throat> that's what they do when you hire them. And, and if you... I've got many jobs on really, really bad auditions, and they just took a chance on me, and, and I turned it into something else on the day. But I, I hate, I, does anyone like auditioning? No. I'm know? terrific in a room. Yeah. <laughs> I really shine in a room. <laughs> well, I mean, Chris, if you're saying you're bad at auditions, it clearly has not hurt your career. You've been in a myriad of amazing projects. What is your best advice in terms of surviving the audition process? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess, what's that? Drink. Drink. <laughs> yeah, that, that might help. I don't know. I mean, I have all different techniques that I've used along the way for auditions. I mean, what, the best thing for me, because I, I get very angry at the people I'm auditioning for, I, <laughs> is to kind of... Uh, and a bunch of this is probably corny, but this is, you know, some take it or, take it or leave it. But 
the one thing is certainly in, in like rough times, which I've had a lot as an actor, was for these five minutes I get to play this cool role that I, that I think is awesome. And so that, that got me through a bunch of auditions. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting to the place of knowing that the people aren't against you. Most, most of the good casting directors and good directors and producers out there and writers, they, they're, they're waiting for someone to come in and be the part and be right for the part uh, so they can move on with their process. They, they want you to come in and get it. So getting that in my head that they weren't against me. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, as corny as it sounds, ha trying to have fun. Absolutely. Do you, guys, do you guys shake hands when you go in the room to an audition? No. no. You don't? No, you get always, shut down too I many always times. do it. It's so gross. <laughs> like I feel so, I'm like, hey, like I shake the camera out I think, for everyone. I think the number one thing uh, for, for me with auditioning um, is, and this is, is obviously different for everybody, but I try to have a little perspective on it. Mm -hmm. I try to, I, I, it's so daunting when you get an audition, especially for a part that you really, really want. And it, it, let's say it's something that, like, in your mind, because this is how actors go, it's like, this is the part that's going to break it open for me. And <laughs> last audition right here. Like, <laughs> I need this. You know, yeah. Or it's like, God, I fucking need I this need paycheck. This. Yeah, um, it's the worst. So it, I try to have perspective on it and just be like, you know, part of the job of an actor is to job interview. And that's really what a lot of auditioning is. It's like you're going into a room with someone that you're going to have to spend 18 hours a day with. Mm -hmm. And part of the whole process is n just not being annoying and mm -hmm. not being... So many actors uh, are like, I'm the best auditioner. They walk in, they're like, boop, 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 boop. Let's fire it up. Let's do pre-audition banner. Let's, you know what I mean? You're I'm describing gonna... me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... That's what I... Uh, but... And that, and that can be good if that makes you feel comfortable, but the, the whole point of it is is that like, it's just an audition. Yeah. And there will be another one, and there will be another one behind that, and there will be another one behind that, and you probably won't get any of them. And so <laughs> once you have that perspective, it's a lot easier to go in and, and just kind of, like Chris was saying, be like, well, for these five minutes, they have to watch me do mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And, and if I'm pleasant, maybe I'll get to do it again. You know, so. I, well, I have one little trick. It might you could try it or not. If, but when they ask you, like, uh, we're gonna, you need to prepare these like five scenes. Th this used to help me get oh, yeah. get job. I would only prepare one or two, and I'd come in and act like I was really busy. And I was like, I could only get to these one or two scenes. <laughs> but if you like something here, I'd like to come back and do the rest. You know, so that would get me back in the room. So I don't know if you want to. <laughs> this is risky. Uh, I, I leave something behind in the room. Yeah. Like, I leave, like, a hat. <laughs> and I come back the next day, I'm like, oh, I forgot this. You guys want to... Oh, my God, you're, ha you're <laughs> testing <laughs> here? Oh, wow. Oh, you're wow. testing here today? I just thought my wow. hat... Well, whatever. <laughs> Coincidence. Might as well read it. <laughs> Beth, what about you? I mean, I would love to... I, mean, I would love to hear from you, I mean, in terms of the audition process. What is something that you've, you know learned or would impart to this room of actors about it? Oh, gosh. Well, the, is, I actually said this before in terms of a scene is being of service. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a hippy-dippy. I pray and meditate and bless everybody in the room. Um, I mean, that's just what I do. And I, <laughs> I know it sounds, that's the truth. And um, it works for me because not only... Um, is it a great equalizer because if you're out in the hall, you know, blessing the person you're going into, it kind of gets you on the same level. Mm -hmm. And it also freaks them out. <laughs> I don't Keeps tell them. on their heels a little bit, like, <laughs> yeah. all right. All I right. don't tell them I'm doing it. I remember one time. <laughs> That's even worse. They're like, I think that lady's putting a voodoo spell on. <laughs> we want to better hire her. <laughs> I don't want a shrunken head. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's worked pretty well for 40 years. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, but one time I was auditioning for a, p a pilot, this is many years ago, and um, they said that a, a big star was coming in, and they, she didn't have to test at studio, and then we got to the network, and they brought her in, and she had on sunglasses, and they escorted her into a private room. And honestly, I loved her so much. I'd been praying for her for a week. 
And so by the time that, you know, they walked her in, I loved her. I wanted her to get the part. I mean, it was bizarre. I got it, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> Take that, Delta Burke. <laughs> Anyway, that's the truth. I'm so, well, lastly, I'm going to ask everyone, uh, because this, we actually got this question a few times uh, in the audience questions cards. If you weren't, if you could not be an actor or a writer or in this business, what would you be doing? Hooking, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> if they would still let me. <laughs> what about you, Zoe? Um, I, would, I would be a teacher, probably. I, I'm, I, I like the idea in like my parallel fantasy life, I go to grad school and I like, I learn about like creativity therapy and then I like, I'm a cool like college professor and I'm like cool with the kids and I get to do weird shit. And then I'm and, your student, I walk And then I go to summer vacation. <laughs> sounds great. I love it. Zosha? Hmm, I know this is, I, I, I'd have to perform in some way. It'd have to be something. A, probably die if not but maybe I'd be like like a basketball wife or something <laughs> like it'd have to be something at that level I'm not about to live a layman life it's just not happening like, no shade it's never what happened like, period <laughs> it is answer so, Ed same answer a basketball player in that case <laughs> no I think um, I always thought actually I was about to give up before I moved to LA and I always thought if does, does it work? I'm going to go and open a piano bar in Bermuda or something and hit on married women. I thought that was my... <laughs> be an aging playboy. You oh. know. Maybe you, it still might happen. Who knows? Right. Fingers crossed. Would you be playing and singing at this piano bar? Oh, I'd be doing everything. Oh, so for yeah. season three of Mindy Project, then. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Turn around. That's not, that's not the time. <laughs> that is not the time. Fair enough. <laughs> that's the song you were going to sing? <laughs> It's almost so gay, it's heterosexual. <laughs> it's, it comes around many times. It always works. Chris, what about you? Uh, I, th I, th I think a teacher. I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to be a teacher. Cool. You wouldn't like Daniel Day-Lewis to be a cobbler or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was, it was cool. Remember when he disappeared for five years yeah. to make shoes? Yeah. <laughs> I could see you coming back and be like, I made these leather jackets. <laughs> I'm kind this of a is, tanner. This is high quality leather right here. <laughs> if Chris disappeared for five years yeah. to Italy with Jen and, and you got a leather jacket from him in the mail every Christmas, wouldn't you just be like, that fucking guy? I, I miss him. I miss I'd him. be so excited. I miss him. Jacket doesn't fit quite right, but I still miss him. <laughs> <laughs> he should have taken my measurements. He's, he's going he, willy nilly. He, he, guessed, <laughs> he guesstimated my size. <laughs> Ike, what about you? Oh, God. I, uh,. Uh, I have an issue with food. I have food problems, so I'd probably uh, work in the restaurant industry. Probably, I was a bus boy before I was on Mad TV, and I worked my way up to waiter, and I'd eventually work my way up to general manager or restaurant. And then I'd probably have some kind of problem with drugs or alcohol. <laughs> I would crash really badly and have to start over and be managing like a. Jack in the Box in <laughs> Bakersfield and Chris would be driving by on his way to Vegas celebrating his Oscar win. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, welcome. To hey, Chris, it's Ike. He'd be like, I don't know who you are. <laughs> Give me my Western bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> and I would say something in the, <laughs> something in the, the food and beverage industry, I'm guessing. I mean, but I, I don't want to, I mean, we all know the internet is the arbiter of the most accurate information of yes. all time, but I had read somewhere that you contemplated going into politics. I did, early, <laughs> early, yeah. early on, early on in my life, I was yeah, obsessed with politics. I still love it, but uh, I, uh, yeah, I wanted to be a senator. My bar mitzvah theme was I Like Ike. It was all red, white, and blue. Oh it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, and I, I really, really wanted to do it, and I like to still think that I would, uh, yeah. If I wasn't doing this, but I, I, I don't know if I would have the strength. <laughs> Fair enough. Adam? Oh, God. Um, the truth is that I'd probably be dead. Yeah. The, uh, the, it's so quiet, but it's true, everybody. Um, once you stop laughing, I die. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You will eventually stop, and I will eventually die. Um, I, I think, you know, uh, 
I don't have a ton of skills. So I'd probably, <laughs> and I know that. <laughs> I'd probably be um, like, I'd have some kind of weed blog. <laughs> You know those guys that are like describing the differences, but no one knows. It's all the same. I could see, uh, you, working at a, I could see you working at a pharmacy. Yeah, I could work at a dispensary. And like talking to me too long. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah. right, give it to me. I gotta go. Right. Yeah, no, 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 no. You're doing it the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, whatever. I gotta go. I gotta go. Please, my God. Have a you life. don't want to rush it. You want to take your time with it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And Mindy? Um, I think if I couldn't have this job and I couldn't act and write, I would, maybe this is just because of my relationship with my mom, but I want so badly to be a mother that it would be, um, I would want to do that like full time mm -hmm. and then just like translate Latin or something because that's my other weird thing that I enjoy doing. <laughs> and so just, different in gravity. <laughs> yeah. So like, I just think like, you know, I had always had this feeling of like, I, I haven't gotten that many auditions, but it, I do hate it so much that I was like, I have to just write my own stuff. And when people stopped being interested in that, I was like, you know, this is crazy and it's, it's, it's not probably a correct way to feel, but I never wanted to leave my kids, you know, to be like, I'm gonna go audition to see if someone would like me. See ya, kids, no. I'll be back. And it's a very hard thing to reconcile with me and I think, it's, I think it's because, and I have a lot of ego because of it, so I always had this fantasy that I'd be like, I'll cash out at 40, you know, and I'll just be a mom and I'll be like one of those people that lives up the coast or something like that. And just like, and just to hang out with my family and does that for a while. Um, it's tiring, this job. So for me, like, that might also be nice. Um, yeah. Well, with apologies to the basketball wife, weed dispensary, political, <laughs> hooker industries, we are very glad you are doing none of those things <laughs> and making this show for us to enjoy every week. And thank you all so much for being here tonight. Thank you to you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you, Jared, Jared, right there. Thank you, Jared. The best. Have an awesome night, everybody. Thank, thank you, you, Jared. Guys so you're much. the best. Keep going. Keep going.